This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Stephen Goff talks about the development of personalised diabetes treatment. Hello Stephen. Morning. I see that uh, diabetes has been referred to as the global epidemic of the 21st century. Why is this? That's quite right. If you look at information collected from around the world, unfortunately diabetes, diabetes is increasing at an alarming rate. Estimates suggest that over the next 10 to 15 years, we will have somewhere in the region of 500 million people with diabetes. And that's really quite frightening. The reasons for this are that both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are increasing. Most of this is due to an increase in type 2 diabetes, which traditionally has been referred to as the diabetes that occurs later on in life. But we know that it's, in, it's developing at younger ages all the time. And the reasons for this is that unfortunately, we're gaining weight, we're a heavier population, and obesity is the major risk factor for type 2 diabetes. But also we're living longer, and we know that as we get older, we're also at an increased risk of diabetes. What research developments have we seen in the past five or ten years, and has this led to any new treatments? There's been lots of research over the last five to ten years, looking at the causes of diabetes, whether there's a hereditary component, what the environmental factors are, why some people develop some of the devastating complications including heart disease and stroke and kidney disease and blindness and problems with the lower limbs. But probably the most important, well I would say the most important and certainly the most exciting is the development of new treatments. When I came into diabetes 20 or 30 years ago we really had two different types of tablets and a fairly limited range of insulins. But in the last five to ten years we've seen many more new different types of tablets better insulins, treatments that are much more easier for patients to use, more convenient and therefore more likely for the patients to take the treatments, and I think more effective as well, so that we can try and reduce some of the complications that I mentioned earlier. And will these treatments be for everyone, or will there be some targeting towards certain individuals? That's a really good question, and that's the area of our research. We are working on new therapies. We have a clinical trials unit where we're looking at the new therapies, mainly for type 2 diabetes, but also for type 1. But we're also looking at why do these therapies work in some people and maybe not so well in others. Not all treatments do work in everybody. And there's very clearly what we could call responders and non-responders. And I think increasingly we're trying to look at our treatments so that we can target them towards people who respond the best. And we're doing this in a number of ways. So one way is to look at large populations of people on different treatments and see if we can look at some of the characteristics that determine or are associated with those people that respond well and those people that don't respond so well, or those people that respond well to one tablet or one injection and not another. That's one way we can do it. Another way that we're doing it is we're looking at some of the medicines that general practitioners are prescribing and that we're then following those patients up on those medicines and then bringing those patients to our clinical trials unit to see if we, can, if we do do some fairly sophisticated blood tests and genetic tests, whether we can find further characteristics and markers of people that respond and people that don't respond. And finally, we are bringing people into our clinical trials unit and we're, we're giving them specific treatments and again doing fairly sophisticated tests to see if we can identify which people respond well to certain tablets or medicines and which people respond well to others. So why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, I think it's really important. I think it's really important that we, we give patients the best treatment that we can. I think we can't just give the same treatment to everybody. We have to get to the situation where we give the right treatment to the right person at the right time in their disease. It's best for the patient, hopefully, if we can find the best treatment for the best pe person at the right time. We can reduce the problems associated with diabetes. And also, we have a finite budget. There's only so much money available for healthcare, and it's important that we spend that money wisely. And that's why I think that by investing in this, there'll be long-term benefits, there will be savings, or at least we know that the money we have will be spending in the most appropriate way. And how does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? So translational medicine is all about taking basic science, clinical research, and translating it into patient care, improve patient care, improve patient outcomes. And I think, or I would hope, that what I've explained shows that by taking some of the basic 
research, which we do in our diabetes centre, we look at new molecules, we look at new therapies, we take them through into clinical trials, but by taking it one stage further and trying to identify who responds really well to certain treatments, we really are translating what our basic scientists and our basic clinicians are initially identifying so that ultimately, as I've mentioned, we can improve the care of the patient and also maybe reduce some of the costs and some of the, the personal and social costs associated with what is, can be quite a devastating condition. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.